Hey everybody, we on chapter 4. Some of these gonna be long, some of these gonna be short. So let's see about this one. Chapter 4. Are they kidding? An argument suddenly erupted at the lunch table. The two boys across from Natalie yelled and pushed away from each other. Natalie tried to recall their names. You gotta be ki kidding me, man. The taller, more slender one yelled. Sheldon, Natalie remembered. That was Sheldon yelling. No, I'm not kidding you, the other one replied. You want to diet, JJ? Sheldon was asking. What for? JJ was the other boy. What you think I'm on a diet for? JJ retorted, annoyed. So it wasn't really an argument, just a loud conversation, loud teasing. Now that Natalie was getting a bit of better look, she could see that maybe JJ did need to lose some weight. She also noticed he had spilled some ketchup on his shirt. The large bread blob and a thin watery dribble made it look like, made it look as though he'd been shot in the chest. No seconds this year, JJ told Sheldon. He didn't seem to know about the ketchup stain. And I'm walking, I'm walking around the track every day. Sheldon folded his arms on the table and dropped his head on them. I am getting a girlfriend this year, JJ declared. Sheldon's arms and shoulders shook with laughter. What kind of girlfriend you be wanting this year? Wait, sorry. What kind of girlfriend you be wanting this year? Serena jumped in, egging him on. A big girl, JJ said seriously. A Christian girl. Well, I guess that leaves me out, Serena quipped. I suppose she has to be I suppose she has to be a virgin too. Sheldon laughed harder, and Natalie put a hand up to cover her smile. Now watch, Serena said quietly to Natalie. JJ will get up and leave. He can only take so much. But he didn't leave. Instead, JJ lifted his chin into the air at an angle. He had sunglasses on, so Natalie couldn't see his eyes. New girl, he said. Natalie cringed and felt the blood rush to her face. Hey, you. Natalie. Her name's Natalie, Serena interjected sharply. Natalie, JJ repeated softly. I'm sorry. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie said. You have a nice voice, JJ went on. Do you have a boyfriend, Natalie? What? Was he looking at her as a candidate to be his girlfriend? How embarrassing. And what a personal question. Really, that's personal, Natalie? Or was it? The truth was that Natalie had never had a boyfriend, and JJ's question struck at a core fear of Natalie's. Because who would want to date someone who had trouble seeing? Fair enough. No. No. She said, finally, in a small voice. I don't have a boyfriend. Sheldon sat up. She's too good for you, JJ, he said, elbowing the boy beside him. You gotta lower your sights, man. My sights? What are you talking about? You know I ain't got no sight. Sheldon started laughing, and JJ laughed with him. Were they kidding? Did JJ make a joke about his blindness? She turned to Serena for a clue. But the bored expression on Serena's face hadn't changed. Don't pay any attention to JJ. Don't pay any attention to JJ. Don't pay any attention to JJ, she said. He doesn't know what he's talking about. JJ stopped laughing and stood up abruptly. I don't want to be. I don't want to be late. I don't want to be late to class," he said. "But what about the ketchup?" 
Wasn't somebody going to tell him about the, the spill down his shirt? Maybe no one wanted to embarrass him? Natalie watched uncomfortably as JJ snapped open his folding cane, picked up his backpack, and left. The whole strange scene at breakfast made Natalie even more homesick for her own friends. She couldn't help but think of them, because it was also the first day of classes back at Western Allegheny High School. Meredith, Suzanne, and Coralie would be wearing their new jeans and the sandals that all four of them had, had bought on sale at Target. Natalie could almost feel their first day excitement, the jokes, the confusion, the locker slamming shut, the hustle and bustle in the hallways, the same hallways she and her mother had been in just a few days ago. They had stopped at the high school one morning to pick up Natalie's tra uh, transcript from the, uh, the main office. It was the week before class started, so the locker, the locker lined halls were empty and spotless, the floors newly polished. As they passed the cafeteria, Natalie could hear faint radio music and the muffled clangings of pots and pans in the back as the cooks prepared for another year of pizza, subs, and tater tots. Hey, Dad. A boy's voice suddenly rang out, echoing in the empty hall, hallway. Natalie's mother touched her shoulder. To your right, she said quietly. It's, it's Jake, the boy said as he came toward them. Jake Handelman. Natalie smiled. She liked Jake, who apparently knew how helpful it was when people announced who they were. She must have mentioned this once. He must, uh, she, mm, how much she appreciated it. Hey, so, oh, he hey, so what are you doing here so early? He asked. Natalie could see him then. The baseball hat on backwards, the cheeky face and wide smile, the bulky black t-shirt. It helped that Jake was so big, as big as the tubas he played in the marching band. At the end of their freshman year, she and Jake had been elected class representatives by the student council. Couldn't wait to be back in school, huh? He had teased. Natalie's smile began to fade. She did not want to have to tell him that she was leaving. But Jake didn't wait for an answer. I was thinking, he said, that we need to go through these proposals written and get them written up for the first student council meeting. Natalie felt herself sinking. They had both pushed for healthier food in the cafeteria as part of the campaigns. A lot of the kids wanted a daily salad bar and a machine that sold bottled water. We should get together one afternoon, one, uh, one afternoon next week. Maybe Friday? I, I, I can't, Natalie said. I won't be here, Jake. She swallowed hard. I have to go to a different school. When Natalie's voice faltered, her mother moved in. Her glaucoma, Jake. It's at the point where there's nothing more we can do. Wow, I, I didn't know. Yeah, but my grandfather had glaucoma, and he had to take eye drops, like, every day. I... I guess I didn't realize people who were peop uh, I guess I didn't realize someone our age could get it too. Natalie was nodding. Eye drops? Eye drops. <laughs> he didn't have a clue. While memories of the past surgeries flashed by, she sniffed and brushed the end of her nose with her hand, a nervous gesture. Yeah, yeah, anyone can get it, she said weakly. 
Jake hooked his thumbs in the pockets of his baggy uh, shorts. His lower voice sounded sincere. Uh, I'm really sorry, Natalie. Thanks, she told him. Good luck to you, Jake. And you too, he replied as they turned to go. Stay in touch, okay? He had called after them. Oh.